Here's Nick with today's headlines. Hey everyone, time for a quick update. Um, got my Blue Ridge hat on. When I was in the Navy, nice old hat. Still looks good. All right, so here we go with the news. It's uh, June 23rd, 2014. Just got a new thing from the uh, the IMF. IMF Executive Board concludes 2014 Article 4, consultation with Zimbabwe. And in a nutshell, uh, here's the article, what it says. It says, directors supported the authority's plans to preserve the multi-currency system for the time being. What does that mean? That means that Zimbabwe is not printing new currency. There's not going to be an RV for Zimbabwe. This means they are on a multi-currency system for the time being. There will be a link to this article in the video. And if you're listening to the podcast, it'll be in the description. So make sure you check that out. Okay, here's an older statement. Uh, this is somewhat similar to Vietnam that you guys might be interested in. Uh, statement by IMF Managing Director Christine Lagarde on the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. The date for this was a little bit long ago. It was September 26, 2013. And basically, she's just saying, Christine Lagarde says, I congratulated Prime Minister Dung on his leadership in developing Vietnam's reform agenda to begin restructuring the banking system, improving corporate governance at state-owned enterprises, and accelerating their equization, equitization, it's a big word, <laughs> and reforming public investment. Given the external environment, I emphasize the need to move forward quickly to preserve financial stability and lay the basis for broad and sustainable, robust growth. The IMF will continue to collaborate closely with the authorities on policies to consolidate macroeconomic stability and their reform agenda the name of this article kind of kind of see it right there a statement by imf managing director christine lagarde on the socialist republic of vietnam socialist republic of the united states that's where we're headed okay zimbabwe june 21st Okay, here's the article for June 21st. It's a couple days ago. Zimbabwe to keep multi-currencies needs to build reserves. China Masa. Okay, and that picture I was trying to show you is Minister of Finance and Economic Development Patrick China Masa speaking at the launch of the source on Friday. And it says Finance Minister Patrick China Masa, or China Masa, on Friday said, government will maintain the multi-currency system introduced five years ago. What year was that? That was 2009. It's 2014 now, so what happened five years ago? Let's keep going. Five years ago, or uh, until certain macroeconomic fundamentals, including the buildup of Forex, foreign exchange, or mineral reserves were addressed. There had been speculation about the return of the Zimbabwe dollar since ZANU PF's election victory last year due to tight liquidity concerns as the economy recovery falters. So Zimbabwe is not doing good right now. The multi currency system, I'm sorry, let me read that again. The multi currency regime is here to stay. We cannot talk about introducing a local currency until certain macroeconomic fundamentals are right, said China Masa during the launch of the Source News Agency on Friday. What else does he say? Uh, some of the issues to be addressed were that of building up reserves, which the government had committed to as part of the IMF staff monitored program, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Essentially, the article, Zimbabwe to keep multi-currencies needs to build reserves. Let me see if there's anything else in that article even worth mentioning. Nope. 
Each week, and almost maybe until a few days ago, the same people had been repeating that I am about to introduce the Zimbabwe dollar. And if you just analyze those statements, then you realize that it is either out of mischief or complete undermining the economy, he said. Okay, so once again, what was this guy's title? Minister of Finance and Economic Development. Okay, so he's in charge of finance, and he's saying I'm not introducing the Zimbabwe dollar. So all you guys who said I was wrong, you're wrong. Sorry, but you're wrong. If you have Zimbabwe dollars, I don't know, probably good for a fireplace. Maybe, you know, maybe you can sell it on eBay and make a few bucks, but it's all worthless. The millions, trillions, billions, those are worthless. The ones from 2008, if you look at your notice, this 2008, worthless. 2009, those were the ones where the zeros were removed, also worthless because they overprinted that. If you guys don't know what a hyperflation is, it's where the money is overprinted, 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 it becomes worthless. Okay, this happens in many currencies over the last hundred years. Um, if you check out that book, The Big Reset, at the very back, if you don't own that book, you should get it. On the website, there's a free download link. But the, for The Big Reset book, it goes over all the currencies that have hyperinflated or just disappeared. And Zimbabwe was like the most recent one, it had a hyperinflation in 2008 and 2009 when they try to reintroduce it. Um, you'll see another thing I printed. I printed it out just so I can show it to you guys because I'm not in front of the computer right now, but I'll, I'll do the screenshot. And it looks like this. And you're probably wondering what that is. Okay, scroll to the bottom of that. It's a, there's a page. Okay, I want you to see that. Okay, look, we're going to be looking right now at this different Zimbabwe notes, and I'm looking at it right now. And you should see... ZW44. Okay, that was a thousand dollars. That's is it a thousand Zimbabwe dollars. Notice the date, 2006. Now let's go down just a little bit farther. I want you to look at ZW53. One million dollars. Then keep going down. ZW56, 25 million dollars. All Zimbabwe dollars. That's what this is in. Keep going all the way down. I want you to look at Z. D, pardon me. Look at ZW91, $100 trillion, 2008. Okay, that's the largest bill. You guys saw those hyperinflation notes, right? The $100 trillion dinars, uh, sorry, $100 trillion in Bobway. And you guys are, uh, you purchase those and you think, oh man, man, when, the, when Zimbabwe re revalues, we're going to get rich. No, you're not. It already revalued. Look right below that. ZW92. One dollar, look at the year, 2009. So right above it, it says 2008, 100 trillion. Some of you guys, I know for a fact, you've never done a currency exchange in your life. There have been many currencies that have gone through hyperinflation. Turkey, Mexico, and here's a new one, Zimbabwe. Okay, Argentina, I think that happened to them too. I think Venezuela might even be having a problem, not sure. But Zimbabwe is a very good example. So look at that again. ZW91, $100 trillion, Zimbabwe, 2008. And then it goes right to ZW92, $1. Then below it, $5, $10, $20, $50, $50 and finally 500 So here's what happened. Zimbabwe revalued their currency in 2009 because of the hyperinflation from 2008. But as you can see from this article that I've posted, the finance minister is saying, no, I'm not reintroducing the Zimbabwe note, even though people have said I'm going to do it. And also, if you look at the uh, printout I was just explaining to you, you'll see that it actually, if you click on it, it says picture and info, you can actually see the picture of the notes. So once again, this is a warning to you. If you have Zimbabwe currency, it's worthless. You can probably sell it on eBay. But when the RV happens, listen, it's not being used in country. You can do all the research in you, in the world that you want. Just avoid the dinar sites, okay? Seriously, avoid them. Just search for Zimbabwe dollar and history of Zimbabwe dollar, history of Zimbabwe hyperinflation, and you'll find that, I think it was in April of 2009, they got rid of those notes, all those trillion, billion, million. They're gone. They're not being used. In fact, uh, the article that I was reading a while ago said that in Zimbabwe, they're using old U.S. $2 bills in a lot of cases. And if you listen to the American, Contra uh, American Contractor podcast that I did, it's uh, podcast number two, 
he talks about how they don't use uh, the dinar. They prefer to use the dollar because they're thinking about the largest bill that they have in Iraq is only worth 25 U.S. dollars. And if you saw that menu I posted on Facebook, a menu from a burger joint in Iraq, and one burger was 5,000 Iraqi dinars. So I want you to think about that for a second. The largest bill that they have in Iraq is only worth 25 bucks, means you can only buy five burgers with the biggest bill. Okay, so Rich knows what he's talking about. You guys got to pay attention to him, okay? So here's the other thing. In Iraq, he told me on the podcast, number two, if you haven't listened to it, you need to. He said that they prefer to use the dollar for large transactions. Think about this for a second. When you have to buy uh, something in Iraq, like let's say a car or some some kind of a purchase you have to make, even if it's a reeky deeky, just n- you know nasty car, you you need a car to get around, right? So you go to the dealership and he says, okay, it's going to be a thousand dollars U.S. or in dinar, it's going to be I can't do the math right now. What is that? Forty, 40 hundredth something. It's a lot. So would you carry around a wheelbarrow of money to the car dealership? No, you'd probably go to the bank and exchange it. Here's the problem. There might not be enough liquidity right now in the Central Bank of Iraq, meaning they have a bunch of dinars, but they don't have a bunch of dollars to exchange. And there's a lot of junk going on right now in Iraq with the uh, ISIS, uh, sometimes referred to as the ISIL. So listen, guys, I mean, they're not they're not able to leave that country with their dinar, really, because it's not traded outside of Iraq. So you see what I'm saying? They're, they're trapped. They're trying to get dollars. So I want you to just think about that for a second, okay? If you're stuck in Iraq. You have dollars. You can get out. If you have dinar, you're screwed. I mean, let's face it. You, you want to get out of Iraq, which you can't because everything is going to be priced in currency outside of Iraq. They, they don't use the dinar outside of Iraq. It's just not being used. It's worthless. So... Sorry, but I mean that's 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 just the way it goes. All right. So to recap, um, in Zimbabwe, the announcement was made that they're not going to be using the Zimbabwe dollar. That I'm, he says, uh, even if I wanted to do it, you can't do it overnight, and it can't be a secret anyway. And you know, it requires a lot of money. Okay. So there you go. Um, I, I don't really know what else to say at this point. I'm going to do a podcast that goes into more detail about these articles here. But in the meantime, make sure you guys subscribe to the newsletter, um, like it on Facebook, like me on Facebook. You'll see the Global Currency Reset on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. I do different updates for each one just so you guys know. On Twitter, it's great because you guys can send articles to me. On Facebook, it doesn't work the same way. You guys probably just send replies to my comments. You know, Facebook's a little bit cleaner. Twitter's more for just, you know, sending me messages. Uh, The newsletter, you can reply to the newsletter. It goes right to my inbox. I read it. Uh, and then the YouTube page, I mean, you're on YouTube right now, so you can leave a comment and guess what? You'll, you're going to be able to hear back from me and so will everybody else. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for right now. Make sure you listen to the podcast for a more detailed in-depth analysis of what's actually happened. Okay. I want you guys to be prepared. And in a nutshell, if you have Zimbabwe dollars, I don't care if it's the, the newer ones from 2009 or the old ones from 2008 that have the trillion, billion, million Get rid of them. Get rid of them fast. Buy gold, buy silver, buy something else, buy something useful. But get rid of your Zimbabwe notes. I don't care what anyone's telling you. I don't care what the gurus are saying. I don't care what the currency dealers are saying. The Zimbabwe note is not being reintroduced. You have an official government announcement right here. And remember, those currency books that I mentioned, the MRI Banker's Guide to Foreign Currency, that book will tell you when a currency is going to be reintroduced because they have to let the bankers know. Okay, think about that. They have to train the banks on the currency. That's very important. You're not just going to reintroduce the Zimbabwe dollar and not have a new book out so people know what it looks like. They need to know what it looks like. You know, how many times have you gone to your bank and they don't even have the internet half the time? The tellers just have their little window. And if you go to the currency dealer, he has a he has a book and it just says, okay, this is what currency is available right now. So. Please think about what you're doing. If you're buying Zimbabwe dollars, you're making a huge mistake. And I know some of you have been buying it. Um, Don't buy it. Get rid of it. Sell it on eBay. Okay? I mean, they've already fooled you once. Just sell it to somebody who wants it as a collector's item. You guys bought it thinking there's going to be an RV for Zimbabwe. I promise you there is not. There is not. Okay? No RV 
for Zimbabwe. It happened back in 2009, and they completely abandoned their currency. Even Wikipedia says it, okay? All right? Even though that's not the best source of information, just there you go. It's on Wikipedia, and you can just read the different external links on Wikipedia. You can go to the Bank of Zimbabwe's website, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. Just go to their website and read what they say. They'll tell you, well, we don't really have much influence because we're on a multi-currency system. Yeah, like literally the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, which is not printing money, is basically telling people, well, there's not really much we can do until the, the currency is reintroduced. And then we have an article here, again, with the date, June 21st, 2014, Zimbabwe to keep multi-currencies needs to build reserves. Okay, so even when this global currency reset happens, you're wondering, well, what about Zimbabwe? What's going to happen? Here's what's going to happen. They're going to be using multiple currencies. So if people are using the U.S. dollar, when the reset happens, they're not going to have much money because the dollar is going to be devalued between 30 and 50% in my estimation. If they're using the euro, even worse probably because I think the euro is going to go next. I mean, you have some countries in the euro that are even worse off the United States with their debt. Um, but just get out of the Zimbabwe dollar if you're in it. Okay, there's no hope. There's no hope. Until they start using their own currency, there's nothing they can do. And when you live in Zimbabwe, you talk to people from Zimbabwe, they are tired of, of their government. They're tired of all the corruption. They're tired of using their dollar. They don't even want to use another dollar. I mean, when you've, when you've watched your life savings destroyed, I mean, even the millionaires in Zimbabwe, they, they, they were smart, but they were stupid. Like, they kept their money in the bank. They, you know, everything's fine. Everything's fine. This is just a temporary thing. Then the next month, prices go up like 100%, 100%. next month, 1,000%. So you have a million dollars, and then your million dollars ends up being worth pennies, pennies on the dollar, because they were too foolish to buy gold and silver, okay? Don't let that happen to you. If you have Zimbabwe dollars of any denomination, sell it. Get rid of it. Trust me, you'll thank me later. You'll be like, oh, you were so right. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know why I listened to the gurus. Trust me. I don't have Zimbabwe dollars, and neither should you. All right, stay tuned for more updates. Listen to the podcast uh, link below for a more in-depth analysis of this. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to the Global Currency Reset.net podcast. Visit Global Currency Reset.net today for more breaking news. And don't forget to sign up for the free newsletter delivered right to your inbox.